Coming up on Small Town Big Deal. Bringing out the very best in a small fishing town. By connecting to a higher power. Beep it! Beep it! And then we're baking with eight-year-olds. So I'm good? You're good. I'm... But hers looks prettier. to Small Town Big Deal. I'm Rodney Miller. And I'm Jan Carl. And we're in Darien, which is on the Atlantic coast of Georgia. There is a tradition here that's been going on for more than 40 years. It is something we have never <laughs> seen before. It's called the Blessing of the Fleet. And you know, Jan, if I was going out fishing on the high seas, I think I'd want to hire a pirate making a blessing on my boat, too. Darien, also known to some as the hidden gem of Georgia's Golden Isles, is a fishing community of about 1900 lying 60 miles south of Savannah. At the Blessing of the Fleet ceremony tomorrow, fishing boats from all across the area will pull up to this bridge and get blessed by local clergy for a safe and prosperous fishing season. And in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As the boats all pull up to the bridge, they're all decked out because part of the blessing in the fleet is a contest for the best decorated boat. So, we board the shrimping boat, the Sundown, to join Robert Todd and his brother, Noel. Their family has been shrimping for over 100 years. Today, they are preparing for another shrimping season, decorating the boat for tomorrow's festivities. Can you tell me what the festival means to Darien and to uh, all the fishermen? It means a lot to us because it lets a community as a whole come and enjoy blessing each one of us as to have a safe harvest and a safe catch. And not only just us as workers, but it also gives the community as a whole an opportunity to bond together and do stuff together. You came up with a theme for the entire festival. Yes, sir. And what is that theme? Well, if you look on the back of this shirt, a safe harvest require incredibly meaningful prayers. And the reason I come up with this is because every day when you leave the dock, whether it's first thing in the morning or you're making a long trip, you look to God and say a prayer for a bountiful harvest and to be able to come back because you can die out there. Uh, anything bad could happen, but you're asking for a safe return and a safe harvest and a bountiful catch. When you're shrimp fishing, do you drag the nets through the water? Yes. What'll happen is... So just troll, kind of. We call these devices right here doors. There's a sled in between them. What that does is that helps spread the net. Being as we pull four rigs, which is four nets. So does the net go all the way to the bottom? Yes. And these floats help to pick the top of the net up to help float it up. How do you know where to go? You've, you've done it long enough. Uh, that uh, means family secret. And Jan, they're treating us just like family. Yeah, they're putting us to work, but at least it's just decorating and not shrimping. And like family, they offer to feed us. We're invited back to their home where Robert and Noel will make us each their favorite shrimp dishes. And two shrimp recipes are about to turn into one big sibling rivalry. Wearing a blue shirt, weighing in at 19 years of age, is Noel, the Prince of Propane Tar. And wearing a black shirt, weighing in at 23 years of age, is Robert, the frequent friar Todd. First up, Noel and his grand grilled shrimp. You just sprinkle it straight across the top and get, make sure all of them get some garlic. Okay. How's that? A little bit more. There you go. Good? Looks good. Yeah, looks okay. pretty good. Then he's going light on some regular pepper before pouring on the lemon pepper. Like that? Yes, sir. All right, that's good. And you're going to kind of stir them around. You're a good teacher. I can tell though you're How's like... How's that? That's good. Lightly sea salt it. That's good. Good job. Here comes your butter. Who do we know that likes butter? Did you get this recipe from Paula Dean? 
No. <laughs> Paula Dean can't cook shrimp like me. You didn't say what I think you said, did you, know? Is that what I thought it was? I think he said, Paula Dean can't cook shrimp like him. Well, let me tell you something, Noel. I love a challenge, baby, and I'm coming after you. Oh, yeah. I think that's a throwdown, Paula. Oh, definitely. That's a throwdown, Paula. Mm -hmm. All right, if you take that, I want you to slowly drizzle that all over the shrimp. Now, that looks like a triple bypass in a tinfoil pan. Now, how long is that going to take to cook? 30 to 35 minutes. Okay. And yeah. now you are prepared. Now it's Robert, the frequent fryer's turn to out shrimp his little brother with what else? A frying recipe. Now, I've got two eggs, so who thinks they can crack them without not getting them everywhere? No, she's going to have to crack the eggs. And I'm I want to see you crack I'm an not egg. good at cracking eggs. I want to see you crack an egg. I wanted Jan to take a crack at that. Can I crack it on this? Perfect. Now, we're also going to add some evaporated milk. So there's nothing in there, so it's already evaporated? Really, Rodney? If you'll pour that in there. Now we pour the evaporated milk into the whisked eggs and mix it together. And what we're going to do is in this other pan, we're going to do our bread. Okay. Y'all can start putting the shrimp into this pan. Okay. We want them to try to soak up as much milk and seasoning as possible. Take the shrimp, put them in the breading, then it's off to the fryer. Now, Jan, I got a question. Have you done this before? I have not. Now it's time for the moment of truth. Let's start with a grilled shrimp. Mm, oh, oh, really good. So where did you learn to cook? You, have, you start to realize uh, through the dating world nowadays that women don't know how to cook, so. So we know which brother's gonna be single longer yeah. now. <laughs> okay, let's try the fried ones now. Yep. I would say the fried. There's something about that garlic and that butter. The fried is good and the grilled is good. So it's a tie, gentlemen. A tie? <laughs> Not in my book. I'm partial to deep fried foods. Coming up. To be blessed beyond measure. You've got a front row seat to the blessing of the fleet. It's a must see, so stay tuned. God will show you where to go. Welcome back to Small Town Big Deal. Today, we're in Darien, Georgia at the Blessing of the Fleet Festival, an annual tradition here for 40 years, comprised of food, fun, and festivities. This town puts on one big party all leading up to tomorrow's big event, when fishing vessels from all around line up at the bridge and get blessed by local clergy for a safe and bountiful fishing season. Right now, the Blessing of the Fleet Parade is in full swing. And here she comes, Miss Blessing of the Fleet. So Cheyenne, what's it feel like to be Miss Blessing of the Fleet? I'm very honored to represent my county as Miss Blessing of the Fleet. I'm, I was in shock, actually. And the Blessing of the Fleet Festival, what does it mean to this town? It's a big part of our community because it brings in lots of tourists, and we have small businesses here that if they go to the Blessing and they go to the small businesses, they see and they'll come back. It's Sunday morning, and the Blessing is just hours away. Boats are making their way down the Altamaha River toward Darren. We met the Todd family earlier. Their ship, the Sundown, is also on its way, and we are along for the ride. All right, you already know my favorite part of this oh, ride. Of course, the dolphins. I know, they were so cute. <laughs> but you know, they're so graceful as they swim through the water, I mean. And Captain Todd says the boat is actually pushing the wave, so it's kind of pushing the dolphins. That's why it looks so effortless. After riding through that spectacular marshland, the Todds drop us off in Darien. They're busy putting finishing touches on their decorations. They hope to win the contest for the Blessing's best decorated boat. It is three categories. First is cleanliness. As you see, we run a tight you ship. Good, you got a good chance on that. Yeah. The next is uh, decorations. Last is theme. The clergy makes its way to the top of the bridge on US 17. 
Then the boats pull up to the bridge one by one and receive their blessings. Leela Pearl, we ask our Heavenly Father his blessing upon you on this season. Blessing upon you, your captain, your crew. Blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The big the big car. Car. You have an anointing on you today, you today to be, to be blessed, blessed beyond measure. When you are blessing a boat, Victoria, what's going through your head and through your heart? My main objective is to connect with the Spirit, make sure that each and every person on the boat receives what they need because everyone on that boat has a different need. Be blessed! Be blessed! Now the sundown receives its blessing. Lord Jesus, you said you are the living water. We bless the boat of living water. Let's pray for a successful year of tripping. The blessing that we hold for the year that means a lot to other shrimpers too because they are a part of us. We're all basically one when we get that blessing. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. And the last boat blessed lays a wreath for all those who have been lost. Coming up next, we're baking with eight-year-olds. Oh my gosh! So stay tuned. Welcome back to Small Town Big Deal. We are on the Bavarian Bell in Frankenmuth, Michigan. That is a mouthful. <laughs> That's a really cool name. And it's a town about 90 miles north of Detroit with a population of 4,400. There is a restaurant that serves over a million people a year, and that's in this small town. So what better place to go than Zenders of Frankenmuth, America's largest family restaurant. History goes that Fisher's Hotel originated the family-style chicken dinner in Frankenmuth. William and Emily Zender bought a closed hotel across the street from Fisher's and opened up Zender's in 1929. We met Al Zender, CEO and grandson of the founders, to hear a little more about the history here. So the first meal that the Zender family served here. On Mother's Day, 1929, we served 312 people at a dollar a piece. And that's a tough time to open in 1929. I mean, you didn't know what was ahead of you in the 30s. Could you pick a worse time? Oh, I know. Time? I'm you're, thinking the Zenders, yeah. uh, I don't know, bad luck Zenders. You're, you're on the doorstep of the Depression. You're in Prohibition. Zenders survived the Depression and began to build a name for themselves. In 1950, the competition across the street was sold to Zenders, and the rest is history. Hi, welcome to Zenders. We bill ourselves as America's largest family restaurant. We do a 1,500 seats. Zenders has grown from the restaurant to a hotel and water park called Splash Water Village and also a championship golf course. And, and that's what we're celebrating is, is the American family and allowing them a time to, to enjoy themselves. Can I be a Zender? <laughs> I want to be a Zender now. Sure. Sure I've been Zenderized. There's only one place in the world to be zenderized, and that's in the kitchen. So you ready? Let's go. Right. I just think these kids might show us up. My name's Amy Callison, and I'm gonna be your teacher today for kids camp here at Zenders. And what we're gonna learn how to make is an apple pie. And everybody's like, rolling out dough. We had to get to work. If it's sticking to me, do I need to put more flour on it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, learning to bake my first pie with a bunch of nine-year-olds, and Jan, I'm a little intimidated. So I'm good. You're good. I'm. But hers looks prettier. <laughs> okay, I'm not much of a cook. And this is my first pie. My best dish is hot dogs. I don't think hot dogs count. How about you, Jen? Do you cook a lot at home? <laughs> not so much. I'm on the road for small town big deals, so. <laughs> well, you don't cook for us either. <laughs> oh, no, look at you. <laughs> Lots of flour on faces, but Jan didn't have any yet. <laughs> you want to peel your apple? Now? Absolutely. Okay. I wanted to take that apple core okay, home with me. That was so fast. And it goes right through this thing. 
Keep going all the way. You were zip, zip done. Good Perfect. job. Perfect. Woo! That looks wonderful. Good job, guys. I know, I have a secret ingredient that oh, is going to make oh, mine oh. really sweet. Jump roll! Oh. This may be the best apple pie I ever made. Toast to the mighty pie! We got to meet up with the executive chef, John Zender, and he took us back a house. Welcome to Zender's Kitchen. This is where we dish all of our chicken items. This is where you dish a lot. Wow, a lot of meals going. 5,000 meals a day are coming out of this kitchen. Unbelievable. All right, here's where we process all of our chickens. Now that's some chickens. This is only part of the thousand chickens a day that we average here. Oh my and our goodness. chickens are a nice big three and a half pound bird. It's about a pound heavier than most restaurants use. Tends to give you a nice meaty piece of chicken. If I had his job, I'd weigh a lot more than I do now. We parboiled it till it was three quarters of the way done. And at this point, we drop it into the deep fryer to finish it off to get a nice crisp brown crust on. It's kind of cool that they boil them first and then they deep fry them. So my story is that makes them calorie free. On an average day, through these three fryers, we will fry a thousand chickens. In just these three? In these three right here. That's a lot of chicken. That's our secret special ingredient? secret ingredient. Oh. That is our chicken seasoning, special blend developed by uh, my two uncles years and years ago, um, and that is what gives it uh, that special flavor. So you still cook it the same way they did way back That's then. That's exactly oh, right. Wow. The tour was over, and now it was time for our family-style feast. Bill, this is quite a spread. Yeah, well, this is our signature Zender's family-style chicken dinner, all you can eat. Bill is the first president that's not a Zender. Is this the only job you've ever had? Yeah, the, the only place that would have me. I started here as a dishworker uh, at age 16. From dishwasher to president, that guy's pretty cool. <laughs> Out of space down here. To... Well, we'll have to stay this way. Yeah. <laughs> <You're bringing> Rodney, <laughs> we could get a bigger table if you want to bring another table say, in here. If but... we don't start sending some stuff back down that way. <laughs> we're, we're doing well. How many people do you feed a year? Well, on an annual basis, uh, we estimate about a million guests will dine here in a year. And in the dining room areas here on the main floor here, we serve over 800,000. And then we have about 200,000 downstairs in the Z Chef's Cafe area and some of our other dining areas. And by the way, these are the pies that you made at Kids Camp. Oh, oh good. Good. You know, this is the first apple pie I've ever made in my life. It is. It is. <laughs> it is. And it's edible. Yeah. <laughs> so, Bill. Congratulations on since 1929 having a leg up on the competition. <laughs> Thank you. I'll toast to yeah, that. Right. <laughs> Welcome back to Small Town Big Deal. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of Small Town Big Deal. And you know, Jen, I think Frankenmuth has got to be one of my favorite towns in all of America. It's because of the fried chicken. <laughs> Not just because of the fried <laughs> chicken, although that didn't hurt. <laughs> no, I mean, it's a great town. It is, it is. And I have to admit, I never knew about the blessing of the fleets for the shrimp harvest, and, but not just for the shrimp harvest, but also for the safety of the crew. And you know what? That was really special. Yeah, and that's an event I'd really like to go back to again someday. And eat more shrimp. <laughs> I'm Rodney Miller. Yeah, we really do eat all the time on this show. I'm Jan Carl. <laughs> Join us again next week when once again we eat our way across <laughs> America. Frankenmuth's really a cool town. How did they get it start? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good short answer. <laughs> like that. <laughs> you know, I really identify with the German things here because my maiden name. Why did I say maiden name? <laughs> <laughs>